A 17-year-old accused of murdering a Carlsbad grandmother on a hiking trail makes his first court appearance. Good evening. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. The teen was in juvenile court where he was arraigned on a charge of murdering 68-year-old Lisa Thorberg. News 8's Alicia Summers has more on what happened in court and what's next in the case. The judge ordered us not to identify the defendant to protect his identity. He was not shown on camera either. The district attorney is trying to get the minor tried as an adult. This matter is before the court today for a detention hearing. The 17-year-old accused of stabbing 68-year-old Lisa Thornborg to death on November 23rd as she walked through Hosp Grove Trail in Carlsbad had his first court hearing Thursday morning. On behalf of the youth, Attorney Kirkwood, are you prepared to arraign your client this morning? Yes, Your Honor. The young Carlsbad resident is facing a murder charge and an allegation of use of a deadly weapon. During his virtual detention hearing, his public defender arraigned her client denying all allegations against him. I have reviewed the detention report with the youth. He denies all allegations in the petition. Deputy District Attorney Jill Gilbert spoke outside the courtroom. We have made a motion for him potentially to be tried as an adult and then the court will make that decision down the road at a transfer hearing and so we petition that court to basically look at that and make a decision of whether or not he will be transferred, the minor will be transferred to adult court. The teen was arrested three weeks after the fatal stabbing. A few days after Thornborg's body was found, the community gathered to walk the trail in her honor, calling it Finish Lisa's Walk. The grandmother had recently moved to the neighborhood and had posted on next door two weeks before her murder looking for a hiking partner, but police said the murder was not connected to the post. Investigative and forensics led police to the suspect. As for a motive, that has yet to be determined. The judge ordered the youth to remain detained until further proceedings. His next virtual court hearing will be on December 22nd. Barbara Lee and Carlo. Thanks, Alicia. Restaurants in San Diego open their doors back up to indoor and outdoor dining today. This move comes after a judge's decision last night was upheld in a court hearing today. That ruling stated that all businesses that provide restaurant service could open. News 8's Heather Hope spoke with happy restaurant owners and has more on how the state is appealing. And restaurants like Nolita Hall here in Little Italy have spent the day setting up their outdoor dining area, saying that it's been frustrating with all the back and forth of the latest restrictions. They're just calling for clarity and consistency with the rules. We're just really excited to hope to get back to business as usual, um, let people back in the building. It's back to business at Little Italy's Nolita Hall after Judge Joel Wolfville upheld his ruling from Wednesday that allowed strip clubs to remain open, also applied to restaurants. All businesses which provide restaurant service, meaning all restaurants in the San Diego, uh, County of San Diego are encompassed within the scope of the court's order. It's not limited to plaintiffs, who also provide restaurant service, but uh, service, but it is intended to encompass all restaurants. The judge previously wrote in a nine-page ruling that the state and county had not provided evidence tying the spread of COVID-19 or lack of intensive care unit bed capacity to live adult entertainment or businesses with restaurant service. Today, people can come on the property and sit down at, a, at one of our tables and uh, enjoy a taco and a beer. Mike Hess Brewing has three locations, an OB, North Park, and Imperial Beach now open. We're opening up to capacity with socially distanced tables, still adhering to the six people per table. City Tacos reopened all six of its locations for in-person dining today. Many restaurants spent time prepping indoor and outdoor tables. Put a lot of our own money into the building, setting up plexiglass dividers and getting the, the social distancing all set up. By phone, I spoke with County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher for his response to the judge's ruling and what businesses it applies to. He said, we don't know. The judge was not entirely clear, but the state of California is appealing the judge's decision today and requesting the court issue a stay. So for now, the county is going to pause on any enforcement against restaurants. San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria stated in response, no one wants our small businesses to be closed, but the science and data are showing a dire trend in hospitalizations and deaths. Over 1,200 have died in San Diego County and the ICU capacity in Southern California has dropped to zero. I am asking San Diegans to continue to stay home as much as possible, wear a mask and avoid large gatherings. Heather Hope, News 8.
A second coronavirus vaccine, this time from Moderna, is on the verge of being approved by the FDA. Once cleared, the state is expected to receive more than 670,000 doses. Governor Gavin Newsom says that California could have more than 2 million total doses of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines by the end of the year. Also tonight, Paradise Valley Hospital has become the first to vaccinate patients in National City. We'll have more on that for you in just a few minutes. But coming up first tonight, ICU capacity in the 11-county Southern California region has now dropped to zero as cases continue to rise. According to Los Angeles County health officials, about two deaths have occurred each hour as hospitals there struggle to keep up with cases. County health officials say COVID related hospitalizations are up 215% in San Diego over the last month. Today, they reported 2,604 new cases out of more than 28,000 tests for about a 9% positive rate. Eight new community outbreaks were reported. There have been more than 38 over the last week. There were also 43 new hospitalizations and eight more people admitted to the ICU. 22 new deaths brings that total to 1,239. Well, as we just mentioned, one of the communities hit hardest by COVID in the county got its first vaccines today. Paradise Valley Hospital in National City picked up its first batch of 200 Pfizer vaccines from the county, which will go immediately to the hospital's emergency room and ICU doctors and nurses. 3% of the overall number of positive cases in the county come out of National City, despite it having less than 2% of the county's population. A second COVID-19 vaccine is expected to be approved by the FDA, possibly by the end of this week. An advisory panel approved Moderna's vaccine today. This comes as the U.S. has surpassed 17 million COVID cases and after more than 307,000 deaths nationwide. Naomi Rockham has more on what's next and how this vaccine differs from Pfizer's. Our vote was even more overwhelming tonight than last week. A key FDA panel is recommending Moderna's coronavirus vaccine be approved for emergency use in the U.S., the second vaccine designed to fight the virus. It does not use products of animal or, or human origin, and it does not contain preservatives or adjuvants. Officials with the drug maker made their case virtually Thursday before the panel examining the vaccine's safety and efficacy. The vaccine efficacy rate for symptomatic COVID-19 infection was 94.1 percent. We also observed a dramatic reduction in severe cases. The meeting comes after two healthcare workers in Alaska came down with allergic reactions to Pfizer's coronavirus vaccine. We anticipate that there may be additional reports, which we will rapidly investigate. Moderna says two allergic reactions during its trials were not related to the shot and that unlike Pfizer's, its vaccine would not require ultra cold freezers for storage. As hospitals in New York and across the country fill up, federal officials say they're ready to roll out almost 8 million doses of Moderna's vaccine as early as next week. One, two, three. Seniors at long-term health facilities and frontline workers nationwide are receiving Pfizer's vaccine this week. And it turns out there are more doses of the vaccine than first thought. If you follow the manufacturer's directions very specifically, you actually have six full doses in each vial. In Texas, a resident in Austin planted thousands of flags on his lawn, a grim reminder of each person who has lost their lives to COVID-19 in the state. Naomi Ruckham, New York. People as young as 16 can get the Pfizer vaccine. Moderna is asking for emergency use authorization for people 18 and older. Overcast and cooler conditions here, but in the northeastern U.S., a deadly winter storm has broken some records. It's a roundabout way of saying we have nothing to complain about. Meteorologist <laughs> Carlene Chavis is here now with a first look and yeah. the latest from the northeast, Carlene. That's right. They were definitely dealing with a whole lot going on. It moved through so quickly. We even have some video of that snowfall that they had. People are digging out today and even a little bit more on the way, but the bulk of that moisture has moved out. So here is some video. We're talking snowfall rates two to three inches per hour. 
hour. So they had winter storm watches and warnings that were in play advisories as well. Most of the areas in the northeast received anywhere between about three to seven inches of snow. They're going to be digging out for a little while. Taking a look at some notable totals for the northeast. Albany, New York saw 22 inches. Also, Binghamton, New York saw 40. That was actually the highest it had seen since records were recorded in 1951. Central Park, a little bit more than uh, 10 inches of snow. So definitely dealing with that snowstorm. But here's the thing. You're just dealing with the snow that's left over. The storm system has moved out a couple areas of low pressure, but there are no advisories, no watches, no warnings in play. Just a few flurries that are going to happen into tomorrow. We'll go ahead and take a look at our forecast coming up. Carlo, Barbara Lee. All right, thanks, Carlene. We have a warning tonight for dog owners. The county says there's been 34 confirmed and probable cases of a potentially deadly bacterial illness called leptospirosis in local dogs since October. Cases were reported mostly in Hillcrest and Mission Hills. At least one dog had to be euthanized. News 8's Shannon Handy has more on the disease, the signs to look out for, and the safety measures you can take. Leptospirosis is nothing new, but it's typically only found in damper climates like to the north of us in the Bay Area. But local doctors say it's popping up more commonly here in San Diego. And if not caught early, it could be deadly. Come on, buddy. Let's go. It's so hard because you can't, they can't tell you what's going on. Nobody knew what was going on with them, so we didn't know if it was something that was terminal or if it was just something yeah. that was going to pass. Just one month after Alexi Perez and her husband Leo adopted their dog Bogey this past summer, the Shepherd Terrier mix started acting strangely. Get very dehydrated, very lethargic, muscle pains. I mean, he, he was, it was hard for him to even stand up out of his yeah. crate in the morning. We had to kind of like lift him up and take him outside to go potty. Oh boy. This video was captured during the ordeal. After visiting three different veterinarians, the Perez's were told Bogey had leptospirosis, a bacteria that infects dogs and could potentially cause acute kidney injury. Generally with treatment, we're going to have a 70 to 80% survival rate. Unfortunately, there will be a population of either dogs diagnosed too late or who may have concurrent illnesses that, that don't make it. Dr. Jenna Olson is a veterinarian at B Street Veterinary Hospital in Golden Hill, where she's recently seen an increase in cases. Countywide, there have been 34 in the last two months, primarily in Hillcrest and Mission Hills. In this hospital alone, we've had about 15 positives since October. And in the 10 years that I've been practicing prior to this, I'd probably only seen three. Leptospirosis is spread through contact with urine from an infected dog. Rodent urine can also be a carrier. Locally, cases have been traced to boarding facilities, dog parks, and beaches. It can be transmitted to humans as well. Symptoms can range from a decreased appetite, vomiting, diarrhea, lethargy, or muscle stiffness. So how do you prevent it with an annual vaccine? It's something we vaccinate for, but it's not actually commonly vaccinated for here in San Diego. Dr. Olson suggests talking to your veterinarian. As for the Perez's, up, 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 up. Bogey was treated with fluids and antibiotics and is back to his old self. He turns a year Good next boy. week, a celebration in more ways than one. Dr. Olson believes local boarding facilities may start requiring the vaccine by 2021. For more information, we put a helpful link on our website. Just go to CBS8.com. Poor Bodhi. I know. I'm like, I felt like that before. See? <laughs> Don't want to go into too much detail.